Um, so tonight, we are extremely, extremely pleased to welcome uh, with us, finally, Marta Minuhin. And I will already say, please, uh, honor Marta with a good applause. And Marta, Marta needs no introduction. Um, her work is uh, groundbreaking, um, game changing since the early 60s when she was extremely young. She um, opened um, a, a path in art, in the arts, that is um, astonishing and uh, will be more and more acknowledged, although it's already acknowledged in Latin America and also more recently um, in the US and will be even more in Europe in the next uh, months. Um, there is a show still running at the Jewish Museum in New York, and there was an important retrospective at the Pinacoteca de Sao Paulo that closed recently, that put together for, um, not for the first time, uh, because that happened already in in Buenos Aires at Malba uh, five years ago, but in, a, in even more, uh, but put together her work in a, in, a, in a way that gives the opportunity to see the entire practice that is uh, complicated, visionary, and, and absolutely relevant nowadays. Um, next to me sits um, Marina Pugliese, who is the, not only the co-curator of the show, uh, Inside Other Spaces, a uh, dear colleague, a friend, but also the um, director of the uh, Museum of Culture, Museo delle Culture in Milan. And there is a magazine that is somehow a sort of kick of the whole process dedicated to the idea of rainbow that is um, still available in our bookstore, it is here. And Marina maybe later will tell us uh, something about how all the projects that, um, that she did and we do somehow are connected and uh, in, in dialogue. So Marta is um, probably very well known for a specific aesthetics that you can also see on her own clothes tonight. <laughs> A very specific word that you can also see in this work. But actually, Marta has um, a line in her work that we believe is extraordinary and needs to be shown and to be shared more and more, which is, on the one hand, her relationship to media and how groundbreaking she was when she embraced media, and particularly new technology in the early 60s. Um, on the other one, um, the necessity and the willingness to engage with audiences, to bring audiences in the space of art, large audiences, large public, and then to put, to transform, to connect all this in, within the realm of um, of the public sphere, the Offentlichkeit, no? in the, within the, the realm of the town. So by conceiving extraordinary uh, public artworks. So this line, the connection between media, technology, um, engagement and uh, outreach, and then becoming the outreach uh, statement towards the public, we want to highlight, because this is also the line that we try to stress as much as possible here at House of Kunz with our program. So, Marina, let's see the first images. Okay. Hello? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Thanks, everybody. So I think you want to hear much more from uh, Marta than from us, but probably it makes sense to uh, give a little bit of uh, um, panorama of how we uh, arrived to the idea of installing uh, Revuelveste e Viva here at uh, House uh, der Kunst. I assume you all have seen the exhibition. If not, you have one week to do it. Um, but uh, uh, at the beginning, we were thinking of doing uh, uh, the Chambre d'Amour, which is the next, uh, sorry, yes, this image, uh, which was done in 1963. And if you think about it, uh, the very first environment we have in the exhibition, which is the first environment we know was done by a woman, is dated 1956 by Tsuruko Yamazaki. So Marta, uh, Marta works, uh, the 60s were the decade in which many artworks were made, many environments were made, and Marta was like very, was a maverick, was very early in the 60s to do environments. So at the beginning we thought of doing this one. 
The Room of Love, which was co-signed by you and Mark Bruce, and which was made and sent in Japan in a department store. So my question is, Marta, how was this artwork received? It was also a little bit s &M. It was a room for making love, for like it was a little bit extreme. So what was the reception in Japan for this work? It is very good. No, it was very good, the reception, but it, it was shown in a, in a house of a person. Okay. It was in a gallery, but it was very good. Some people made love inside. So it was really yeah. used to make love? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you enter through a vagina, uh -huh. and then it was very big inside. It was a bed done by Barbros that moved. So... That's it. Okay, so the bed was moving, right? Moving. Okay. No, when you sit, move, so move the whole thing. Everything was moving. Okay, yeah. great, yeah. great, great. Yeah. <laughs> so then, after thinking at the beginning that we would have done La Chambre d'Amour, with Andrea, we decided we would go for Revuelve Se Viva. And we made this decision because with this artwork, you won the Torquato di Tella uh, prize, uh, which was, uh, an, an, you won the national version of, uh, of the award, but it was an international award uh, with, international, uh, with an international jury. So it's what gave you, you know, like a relevance. Yeah, the, the jury was Pierre Restani and Cleven Grimberg. Yes. Yeah. On top of Jorge and Romero, Romero Brest. And the other four matrices that, that you see in the back, they were called erotics in movement. Yeah. Because they have resort, and want to, to go around. Everything was destroyed by the militars. Uh, only one st that is at the museum, at the Museum of, Modern so Art. This, oh, like, of Art, National Art in Argentina. So this happened later when the dictatorship uh, happened later in the 60s that they destroyed the work at the Torquato di Tella. No, no, in 1969 was another military. Yeah. And they destroy everything that was in Ditella on the basement, where all the international prizes were there, like even Rosenquist, I don't know, artist, fantastic, Jim Dine, everything, they destroy everything. And what was the reception of Revuelve Se Viva at Torquato d'Italia? Because again, like the sexual reference was evident in the title, right? No, no, they destroy, Not so much? No, nothing to do, they just destroy everything. Ah, okay. Yeah. Good. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, this the, is in, in Buenos Aires. This is Buenos Aires, and again, this work is filled with children. So today somebody asked me if we are happy as curators for this exhibition being so much appreciated by families and children, and I said, of course, I mean, why not? As if contemporary art should be something, you know, apart from children. Um, but then we know that Menezunda, we will see it later, was not for children. After that, I did Menezunda, yeah. and after that, Batacaso. Yeah, but how... They, they were all to, go, to get inside, yeah. But how, what is the relationship with children? I mean, how comes this photo just with children? At Menezunda, children could not, could not enter. It was forbidden under 16, because I, I, I believe that everybody is a child, not adults, you know, the child's... So the child destroy, uh, they can jump, or they, they will not got the idea. Also, like, because it was the people in bed, in the middle, in Venezuela, uh, people in bed. Ah, uh, okay, I got it, I got yeah. it, okay. So being children is a permanent condition, but Venezuela was a little awkward for children, so no, children couldn't children. get in. And also because they, they, they could destroy Venezuela also. Yeah. Now we, going, we know something about it. <laughs> now Venezuela is going to, to be shown in Europe, but it will happen the same. Not children and not with shoes, without shoes, like here. Okay. Yeah. Well, the history of destruction is the history of the environments. Environments disappeared, um, are, not, um, are not available, and because they were destroyed for various, various reasons, not only by children, mostly by, <laughs> by the fact that um, they were very fragile, they were very experimental, not easy to conserve. So when we, Marta, called me um, um, at the beginning of February, one year ago, saying that the uh, work, Revolve Se Viva, a copy, a version of the work, uh, was in the hands of a collector, 
in uh, Argentina, we uh, started having hope, saying, okay, maybe we can ship this work, maybe we can see this work. And unfortunately, the collector passed away. So yeah, it seems terrible. impossible to, to reach out to this work. And then suddenly, again, at the end of May, at no, the end of April, Marta reached out again, very keen on helping us making this exhibition, saying we could see the work. Um, you have to come to Argentina for three days. We can see it for one day. And so we can learn how to make this work again from scratch. So um, with a um, colleague of us who is in the room, we um, went immediately to Argentina, to Cacar, went to a remote region, and we encountered the work in the condition you can see on the left side of this slide. Impossible to be shown again, completely in bad, bad, bad condition. But we learn um, from Marta how to remake it. And, um, a team of about 30 people for three months have been working in the, in the storages of House Tacoons to reconstruct um, the environment as you can see it in the exhibition with a constant dialogue with Marta via WhatsApp, via Zoom, um, on, on a very accurate reconstruction that was, um, that was uh, coordinated by our colleagues of the production and, and display department, in particular um, overseen by Elena Carvajal. And we ended up um, getting very close to what is now in the show. And you can see various sequences of the work appearing and then the work becoming what it is uh, now. So these uh, amazing 30 people, many of them are here in the room, uh, made this miracle happening. And we generated a work that was uh, disappeared um, and, and is now experienced by, by audiences. But Marta was mentioning Menezonda. So this work is the work that comes before Menezonda in 1964. And then Menezonda arrives. And Menezonda changed the history of art, not only of the, of the environments, no? Yeah. So Menezunda is a, a huge work made yeah, of... 11 situations. Yeah. 11 different situations. With, with many different situations. Many different ways to go from one place to another. It was a labyrinth. It was a labyrinth. That is the couple That's in bed. In bed. Yeah. And also inside the, the big house, there, there was people who make up or made massage. Okay, and here I have a question. Ah. Okay, why on earth, in the head of a woman, there is an aesthetician? Doing yeah, because the, the, the women never work at that at that time in the sixties. They, they didn't work. They all all the all the makeup only makeup inside the head of the women. Okay, that's. I mean, you know what? If if it was made by a man, I would be a little bit skeptical. By yeah. you, I'm I'm gonna take it. Okay. And, um, and that was the first time you can see yourself in television. Also. Because also. Has, yeah, the, the, the was people it. saw themselves in television, and also the news were coming from outside. So he was mixed with the news. That's when I, I started working with you. After that, I, I made simultaneity and simultaneity. I started working with the, with the news, with news. And how was your relationship with uh, Ruben Santantonin? Because the work was done we went, together. We went something that was Buenos Aires at that time. We wanted to represent, like the Neon Tunnel was the, the one street in Buenos Aires with all the movie houses and everything. So we represent the movie. The people in bed, because that was a dormitory, where, where there, in, the, in the reality there is many couples who live, who live in bed, who, who <laughs> live in bed. Actually, it was a work because now when I do Minnesota, the people have to stay eight hours. And even in one moment, the couple, for being in the bed, they fall in love both and they get married. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. After the video. This, this is fantastic. This is Spain absolutely fantastic. So, this work was visited by thousands of people. There was like a huge queue to visit it. It went all over the newspaper. So this work gave you, gave you an incredible In different boost. situations because we didn't believe anybody in the painting or in the object, just things to go inside. To, uh, people to live in art. That's the moment when I start 
to, to create sensation that was not to watch a painting and not to go inside and to live in art. So in, in her early 20s, um, Marta uh, conceives an extraordinary, huge, ambitious work made of different environments, not only one, but many environments, with a very uh, special um, and unique presence of technology. On the left side of the slide, we can see an array of neon. Neon was a new material in art, it was at the very beginning, so you just brought the neon inside the art very, very early. And you were mentioning the TVs, the TV camera. That was something that until very recently, we were all convinced that the beginning of video was mostly in Germany, you know, and this yeah. uh, conversation between Nanjum Pike, Wolf Hostel, and then migrating to the US, whilst in Argentina at the same time, you were already working with video and with real, at a very, very young age. And that was only the beginning. We have a film in the, in the exhibition called La Menezunda, where that documents the work that uh, the audience can see and witnesses what uh, Marina was saying, the high amount of people that came. But then, comes El Batacazo. El Batacazo, yeah. And um, what, what does it mean, Batacazo? Well, the Batacazo, there were, again, people, the other people can see the people inside living the situation. So in order to, like the art critics, they were art critics because the international prize that I didn't win it, but uh, the, everyone has to slide on the top of her just to, to to judge the work of art, because it was a competition. So they had to go inside the football players and also to slide in the toboggan, walking in, in a giant women, and then go to a cosmonauts room with many cosmonauts, and also you, you have this tunnel with bees that move, was like real cinetic with lights. So, so basically it was like a, a competition where people had to physically do things, go through different environments, yeah, they, they should get, get on this that slide, that. Yeah. and then from the slide they would jump on this yeah. giant uh, inflatable They had to, to, go, to live in art, the, the art critic should go inside and, and slide in the toboggan so they can shut the work. Okay, okay, interesting. And yeah. with this work, uh, again at the Torquato di Teglia, so it's incredible because Marta at the Torquato di Teglia, which was like the most important uh, uh, art institute in Argentina, did two big, huge, immersive environments uh, in the same year. And also had live rabbits. With a live rabbit as well. And bees. And bees. Two animals. And bees. Yeah. But Two Menezunda bees. was in May, but Akadza was in November, December. And with I took all the prize, all the money of the prize to send to New York. I didn't speak English and I didn't know anyone, but I went to see Leo Castelli and he introduced me with Bianchini and I show for one week and then the society that pro protects the, the, the animals close because the rabbits were dying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the same work with live animals was made in New York, but there animal, uh, yeah. um, how to say, protection was at a different uh, level and so the, the exhibition was closed. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now this is later, the soft gallery. Yeah, yeah. soft gallery, okay. So this is like a, a different stage in the mattress uh, research, right? Always so the mattress, the mattress is always there, yeah, right? Yeah, because I like to work in mattresses even if I do it myself because half of your life you live, you use mattresses. To sleep, to, you, you can die in the mattress, you, can, you, you are born in mattresses, you may love, you can kill, you can do everything in the mattress. <laughs> yeah, it's true. They are alive. Yeah, but, but also there's a difference in proportion. Like at the beginning, the first works were tiny with mattress, then there's the bedroom in the Minnesota, and then here, the soft mattress yeah, they is, were is just huge. Yeah, regular mattress, and the people jump, and I made uh, many happenings inside, artists like Charlotte Moorman, Caroline Zeman, Al Hansen, all of them create an action every day inside that. And the people jump in the mattresses, yeah, it was fantastic. Was so it was also somewhat a stage for performances and happenings. So. Every day, every day was a performance. The people came because I did it in Washington, and the people came from New York. The artists, 
many artists, and they did their own companies in a soft situation. Yeah. As, as Andrea said at the beginning, like there are some recurrent elements, yeah. you know, the performance, the technology, and the performative stage. So simultaneidad and simultaneidad. Okay, well, I was very influenced by Marshall McLuhan, that said the video and the message. So I try to, in, in the world of communications, so I, I, I connect with Capro and with Bostel in New York. And I say, why we, we, we don't do a happening in each country? And we communicate with the early bird saying how it is. So I did the happening of Capro that was a, a, in Argentina. First of all, I, I have 60 famous people because the faces were more reproduced in all the papers. I call the 60, they were invited to come and see themselves in television and also see the happening of Capra, the happening in Bostel and two TV stations in Buenos Aires. So I was doing the happening of Capra that was a car with cream and a rock group with love, uh, with the cream. People were leaking like the, and the car. Bostel was very terrible because it was half a cow with uh, the people putting needles. Oh my God. Yeah, this is very much Bostel. Yeah. So it was fantastic, and then, so the, the people came inside twice, dressed exactly, because it was, wasn't direct TV, it was also a videotape, so we filmed the people, and they, 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 they should come dressed exactly the same, they, they, they have a radio, and they listen to their voices every time that they arrive, and then, uh, and then they sit, and they sit themselves on television. That was uh, simultaneous, the simultaneous, same time I was talking with Capra and Bostel. Marta, I have a question here. So our exhibition is also about the fact that uh, women have somewhat been, uh, if not canceled, forgotten, and if not forgotten, kept uh, on a side from the history of art and the history of environments. So, so Alan Kaprov is the one who wrote the book in 1966, the same year in which you did this together. He wrote the book, Environments, Assemblage Environments and yeah. the Happenings, and you are not mentioned there. Um, they were uh, in New York at that moment. When I arrived, many people were doing happenings. All the more was doing happenings. Uh, she, every, all, 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 pop, all pop artists, they were doing happenings. And after that, I did simultaneity, simultaneity, and I did nine evenings that was with technology, Rauschenberg. Yeah, but that, that's when I talked with Capra Bostel, the most famous. Famous because their faces was in the media. That's why. They were all every, every day in the newspaper, whatsoever, so that's why I invite only famous people. In that case, when I came to New York, I became very good friend of Andy Warhol because Andy Warhol also worked with fame. Right. We all, we asked, yeah. This is now before Minifold. Yeah, uh, yeah. a Minu code is somewhat of a sociology experiment. What, what did you do for this? It was an environment created for four different groups of people. They were invited to a cocktail, and they, first of all, they saw there were cameras, but then they forgot, so they were, the first one was economists, the second one was politics, the third one was fashion, and the fourth one was artists. Eighty persons from each social group selected by computer came into the place, they were filmed, and the next week, all reproductions, so you, you were surrounded by politics, economies, artists, and also a Minu code in New York. And so the second time you had the same people in the room with projections? Not the same people. Anyone could be, uh, anywhere. because uh, the politics, they were the most famous. They were selected by computer. They were celebrities, also in fashion. The most famous model, bunny. They were all celebrities. <laughs> And did you notice differences uh, in the social groups, in behavior? Like what, what? The did you notice differences in the way people yeah, were you behaving? See, even they sh change the color of the film. With the same film, fashion, like the, the film is very clear, transparent, and 
uh, art was crazy because it did everybody here in New York about the cocktails. So came many people they were not invited. So the, the color was like brown, and politics was black. The, the film changed because according to how the people were, were dressed. I got it. Okay. And this work is um, witnessing, um, confirming, in fact, what we were saying at the beginning, that um, Marta was um, putting on a stage through an environment, you can see this is a room made of moving images, um, audiences of different kind, but uh, involving or having, giving a major, um, a major presence to technology. You see it, uh, projector, the film projector, and basically um, the, what was recorded was then transmitted, projected on the wall. So these kind of environments were absolutely groundbreaking. No one else was doing something like this. Now I think it's important to remind also um, the, the public in the room that this is something that is... At, at was an environment created by films, but it was to how the people behave according to his profession. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it reminds me a little bit the fact that uh, there's, a, there's a film which, which uh, um, is, is repeated somewhat, repeats somewhat the same image. It reminds me a little bit of Maria Norman film room, if we want, but this is much more of a social situation than, than Maria's one. And then we thought it was interesting to move towards the yeah. work that you made in the public space. Well, the problem I came back point. to live in Argentina like in 1982, after being in New York and Washington, and I decided the military were there, and I tried to do the obelisk lying down, so I was invited to the Biennale International, in Biennale Latino, Latino American Biennale in Sao Paulo, so I decided to do the obelisk real size, lying down, lying, and then people will walk inside and we see a film how the, the obelisks fly from Argentina to... And then, uh, then I did a panettone obelisk, and then I... Yeah, that was a fly. It was very... 74 meters long. Yeah. And it's the next one, I think. Yeah. This is the panettone obelisk. Yeah. 30,000 panettone. Yeah. Fake. Fake, and the people exchanged it by real. But then the people went crazy. And we had to stop because the obelisk could kill the people because the people jumped. <laughs> yeah. And again, you are incredibly uh, innovative because uh, basically you began doing public art, which was totally anti-monumental. Public art to be eaten, public art to, to fall down yeah, and become I horizontal. Went to, I got to, to lie down all monument, all universal meat. Universal meat like the obelisk, the Tower of, I did the same show, Tower of Bread in, in Ireland. I did very, very, uh, the Big Ben in Manchester. What else? And then if we Carlo think... Gardel on fire because he's a meat in the Colombia, Medellin. Yeah, America. yeah, we have, yes, we have the image yeah. here. So and, uh, and if we think the about it... Of tango, and he died in a fire accident in, in Medellin. So I was invited to the real, and I did 70 meter high with cotton, that, that is a product, a national product of Colombia, cotton. So I cover and then I put it in fire in 10 minutes. And why did you choose Carlos Cardell, who is this icon, no? It's a sort of superstar of tango. Why did you want to, to, to burn? No, because he died in a fire accident in Colombia, in Medellin. He died, he was going to sing, and then the crash of the plane, on fire, so I did Carlos Gardel on fire. Wow. Yeah. So, so this was a celebration of him, and people were singing. No, the, the people were so moved. They were like moved, 10, okay. 10,000 people singing Gardel and crying and everything that night. All those monuments bring all kind of emotion to the people, like the Parthenon of Books also. Well, all of those bit I haven't done, but now I'm going to do the Tower of Pisa with bottle of mineral water, and then the Statue of Liberty, I got to do it, and, and the football, oh no, over there you can see the, the, the football bar with dulce de leche. 
So this was a, this is a drawing you made in '85 of project of public art you would wanted to make, and then you made or you are doing now. You want to do some? I try to still do have some do. already. I yeah. try to all of them, all of them. I try to do it. Yeah, yeah, because we, this is the Parthenon done in Argentina in a moment that the, the democracy arrived. So all books they were forbidden by the militars, but even myself I had to to the main books disappear, and all the books were hidden in the houses and in the editor house. So they gave me all the books, and the people then took the forbidden books. It was fantastic because it was a, just at that moment we had the first president democracy, and now we have 40, 40 years of democracy. Before they were all, always militars. Yeah. That is very, very strong. And then I did it in in, document, in castle. Yeah. Yeah. It was real size. It's a 22 meters high, 70 meters long, and 35. Gigantic. You seen it, no? Yeah, of course we did. Of yeah. course we did. <laughs> yeah. Impossible not to see it. And what happened with the books in Kassel? People took it. People took them. Okay. Yeah, and they were sent from all over the world because all countries, even now, in my exhibition in the Swiss Museum, there is one world forbidden books now in the United States. Now. I'm amazing, Marta. Yeah. I, I just wanted to add that it is so difficult, so rare that women do public artworks so, because public art is mostly really a field for men. Because really, it's, it's a miracle because, because I, pro I proposed that, that to documenta and cost one million euros. And I don't know how the million euros appear, but I did it. Yeah. And you did it for the people. Yeah. Great, Marta, thank you. Yeah. To be immersive, this is the idea. To live in art. Yeah. That what happened in this exhibition. In, in, in the exhibition now of the women who we, we were first in doing art to go inside and to live. To relax, like in my world, the people can relax and sleep in the one that's here. Um, in a few days, you are going to launch an app, an application, and a performance. Yeah, 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 can, that, can, that. can you tell us about this new project? Because it's very visionary, it's very interesting. What is it about? The, the performance that I'm going to do, to find your opposite. Your opposite. And how does it work? Well, in order to, uh, no, by instant, I was living, I was married with an economist, nothing to do with me, and it worked fantastically. <laughs> and so now it's a, uh, the people answer the questions, and they go to meet in a bridge in Buenos Aires by Calatrava, a fantastic bridge, uh, all dressed in black and all in, in white. And then from a helicopter, I, I will throw. Petalos, or how do you say petalos? Flower petalos, uh, on the head of the people, and the people will meet with his opposed. Yeah. This is a, a performance very sophisticated. And how did you have the idea of making an app? Why did you make an app? Why, why can you make an app? Yes. To, to get to everyone in the world with the app. <laughs> But now, what's happening now with the Instagram or with the application is fantastic because you are immediately in the same place at the same time. It's unbelievable what's happening with that. Now it's much better to be in Instagram than to be in a paper or to be in a magazine. You, are, you get more people and you live the moment. So. How about your inflatable art, Los Inflaves? When, again, because I like ephemeral art. I done a lot of work that were ephemeral, and um, I, I, I find that you, you can have also a, most, a, a moving sculpture. You can send it to every part in the world and do it there on the street and surprise the people. Thank you okay, so don't. much, Marta. You have been extremely generous. What a treat to have you here. Thanks, everybody. Great. Hey!